the baseline is now this trade war is here to continue. What are the implications of that? Yeah, we, I think you've seen this shift certainly over the last month or so. Um, and there is a, a settling in of the belief that this trade war is going to go on perhaps for, for many years, um, or at, at, at a minimum. Or the, the dispute with China is going to continue for many years, whether we get some kind of agreement or not. Is this the mother of all opportunities? I mean, guys like you, your value guys, Mario Gabelli and you, have seen 18 of these before. How do you frame tariff trade, China, the world's coming to an end within all the other challenges you've seen over the decades? Yeah, well, listen, you focus, as always, on the fundamentals. And on the what do the fundamentals tell you right now? Fundamentals are still pretty good in the, in the United States. The consumer is in good shape. Unemployment is obviously very good. Right. Housing mm -hmm. holding up, although we've gotten some, some uh, data that's not been great uh, recently. Um, but, you know, earnings look good, valuations not stretched. I want to go back to banking right now. David Harrow was on. He's getting hammered and it's an international portfolio. Deutsche Bank has gone from 0 0.22 times book down to 0 0.21 times book as well. Does the Gabelli shop look at EU banking as the mother of all values? Do you go for cheaper U.S. bank stocks or do you just climb on Fortress Diamond and take the moonshot ever higher? You know, historically, we've been underweight the financial yes. sector, banks in particular, because they're subject to these <clears throat> periodic blow-ups, whether it's the EM crisis or uh, mortgage crisis, et cetera. So when it comes to, the, to European banks, um, you know, we're not really involved. I think we're, we're obviously monitoring the situation with Deutsche Bank to the extent that there are structural risks, counterparty risks um, that could have broader implications for the economy. Okay. What's your biggest concern out there away from trade? Well, trade clearly is uh, number one these days. We, we, we talk about the, the T's. Uh, and that would be uh, trade, Trump, Teresa, to the extent we can't talk about that, and, uh, and, Who? and treasuries. <laughs> uh, clearly, treasuries have taken a, a bit of a back burner. The, the Fed um, is, has paused, more likely to cut right. to raise. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think the focus really is on, on trade and how this plays out. Okay, on, on treasuries, are you worried that the, you know, China will weaponize treasuries or their holdings of treasuries, or do you worry about a, a sudden repricing of treasuries? No, I think it's more, well, listen, obviously the Chinese could push that uh, so-called nuclear option and, and dump their treasuries. I think that's unlikely. That would not be in, in their interest necessarily. Um, but, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's more just looking at the impact of interest rates on the real economy and on the pricing of uh, other assets. Futures negative 30, down futures negative 253, and again, a massive risk off feel right now. Bring up the chart you just put up. I thought this was brilliant. Uh, it was a Deutsche Bank chart. And also Euro stocks, and this, uh, this is the blended European bank stocks and Deutsche Bank failing so miserably. How heavy now is individual stock selection versus bet in the sector? What's, what's the weighting of that right now? It's an interesting question. You know, um, obviously the macro is always important. I think one of the things we learned in 07, 08, 09 in yeah. particular was you can't just stick your head in the ground and, and pretend that what's going on in the world isn't happening. Um, uh, cl clearly, trade is having an impact on companies of all sizes. Right. But the focus really is, you know, I think you, you can find companies that have less exposure to China, less Give me a name. I need a name on a Thursday morning. Well, you, th you think about a lot of the domestic cable companies and, and media companies that were focused on. Charter has, Charter Communications, for example, the second largest cable operator in the United States, has, you know, virtually no China exposure. It's a service. It's a utility. It's an unregulated utility. There are clearly other challenges that they're dealing with, like wireless yeah. competition from some of the over-the-top players. But China's not one of those issues.